Why aren't you training, Nesta? I don't want to. Why not? Don't waste your breath, Az. I'm not training in that miserable village. You've been given an order. You know the consequences. If you don't get off that fucking rock by the end of this week, what happens next is out of my hands. So you'll tattle to your precious High Lord? Big, tough warrior needs oh-so-powerful Rhysand to fight his battles? Don't you fucking talk about Reese with that tone. Reese is an asshole. He is an arrogant, preening asshole. Asriel sat back in his seat, eyes simmering with anger, but said nothing. That's bullshit. Cassian's siphons burned like ruby flames. You know that is bullshit, Nesta. I hate him. Good. He hates you too. Everyone fucking hates you. Is that what you want? Because congratulations, it's happened. Asriel let out a long, long breath. Cassian's words pelted her one after another, hit her somewhere low and soft and hit hard. Her fingers curled into claws, scraping along the table as she flung back at him. And I suppose now you'll tell me that you are the only person who doesn't hate me. And I'm supposed to feel something like gratitude and agree to train with you? Now I tell you I'm done. The words rumbled between them. Nesta blinked, the only sign of surprise she'd allow. Asriel tensed as if surprised as well, but she sliced into Cassian before he could go on. Does that mean you're done panting after me as well? Because what a relief that will be to know you've finally taken the hint. Cassian's muscled chest heaved, his throat working. You want to rip yourself apart? Go right ahead. Implode all you like. He stood, meal half finished. (laughs) The training was supposed to help you, not punish you. I don't know why you don't fucking get that. I told you, I'm not training in that miserable village. Fine. Cassian stalked out, his pounding steps fading down the hall. Alone with Asriel, Nesta bared her teeth at him. Asriel watched her with that cool quiet, keeping utterly still, like he saw everything in her head. Her bruised heart. She couldn't bear it. So she stood, only two bites taken from her food, and left the room as well. She returned back down to the library. The lights blazed as brightly as they had during the day, and a few lingering priestesses wandered the levels. She found her cart filled again with books needing to be shelved. No one spoke to her, and she spoke to no one as she began to work, with only the roaring silence in her head for company.